when you initially start up on the ramp near the grass or near the snow, uh, you'll pull forward and in most cases you will pull forward and make a right hand turn onto the center line. Uh, you'll want to do this slowly and carefully as you are close to other aircraft and uh, traffic concerns may dictate that you need to make a left turn but talk to your instructor before doing that. Once you're established on the center line, you'll pull forward uh, at a careful speed. Uh, you will need to cross-check your clearances of your wingtips and taxi slowly to give yourself ample time to control the airplane safely. If it is icy on the ramp, taxi slowly and be sure not to use excessively high power settings or uh, excessively sharp brake pressures as you could skid a wheel and potentially lose some directional control even while taxiing slowly. So taxi carefully, taxi slowly. Once you reach the uh, area to the east side of the ramp you can complete your run up here as long as there is not uh, too many aircraft uh, in place and this will allow you to when you do call ground uh, include in your initial call that the run-up is complete. This can give uh, ground the information they need to give you a, a, an expedited and more efficient taxi clearance. When you call, you will call that you are located at the east end of the Elliott ramp and from there you can proceed to the active runway. Again, be careful. There is a fair amount of traffic moving on this area of the airport, so taxi slowly cross-check clearances uh, before making any movements. When you return to the parking ramp, you'll enter on the west side uh, through the main Elliott ramp. As you do this, be careful. Uh, there are often transient aircraft, larger jets and turboprops, as well as some in-flight aircraft parked uh, on that portion of the main ramp. So use caution and taxi slowly. As you pull in towards the parking ramp, establish center line, and then as you drive down the line, there will be two lines of aircraft parking available. One on the left, one on the right. The parking slots on the left are pull-through slots. You can simply align and pull through. If you need to park on the right side, you'll need to carefully move toward the parking slot that you choose, watching your wingtip clearances at all times and then execute a 90 degree turn using a combination of throttle and brake to smoothly align the airplane as best you can with the parking spot before bring it to, bringing it to a stop. At this point, you'll shut down the aircraft. When you are ready to tow the airplane, if the propeller is in the way of where the tow bar will go, you'll need to move it so that it's horizontal. Always move it away from the direction or backwards from the direction of rotation to avoid a magneto firing. When you do put the tow bar on, you're going to put it on the two tow pins, not on the axle nut. The two tow pins are located above the tire. You'll put the tow bar on both pins using caution not to touch the exhaust pipe with the tow bar and then when you're ready to push, you can use two hands, or if it's easier, you can push as with one hand on the base of the propeller. You do not want to push the spinner. You should not put any force there, but only on the base of the propeller when pushing the aircraft. This will help give a little more force to move the airplane while, when moving it backwards. One hand is used to steer, the other to help move the airplane forward. While doing this, if at any point you're unsure of the position of the aircraft, stop, put the tow bar down, and check your wingtip clearances. It may take one or two tries to get comfortable doing this, so if you need help, don't be afraid to ask and practice uh, with your instructor before doing it on your own. The tow bar comes off in the same manner just a small squeeze.
If the airplane is in a tight spot and or you don't have a tow bar, uh, you can move the airplane by pushing down on the horizontal stabilizer to raise the nose wheel and then move the airplane or reorient it by hand. When you do this, you need to push only where there's rivets, only where there's structure. The places between the rivets is only thin aluminum, and if you push on that, you will damage the horizontal stabilizer. So push only where there is structure, and then the structure of the vertical fin can also be used to help guide the airplane. So using the weight of your body, push down to raise the nose wheel, and then you can pull the airplane or push the airplane, whichever is easier, to reorient the airplane to the position that you need. At that point, you could push the airplane forward or backwards into the position as necessary.